Hello and welcome to this Unipify webinar on Rethinking Impact to Finance the SDGs, a position paper by Unipify's Positive Impact Initiative. This webinar will be presented to you by Eric Usher, Head of Unipify, and Dennis Childs, Head of Environmental and Social Advisory and Positive Impact Finance at Société Générale, as well as a co-chair to the Positive Impact Initiative. And finally, as well, by myself, Corinne Abb, Program Lead of Positive Impact at Unipify. Following Eric's presentation, which will be around, um, and Denny's presentation, which will be around 40 minutes, there will be plenty of time for you to provide feedback on the presentation, even on the position paper, if you've had a chance to read it already, for you to ask questions. To do that, you have a couple of options. You can either use the raise hand function, so there's a little button with the hands that you can place, in which case we will unmute you so you can ask your question. Alternatively, you can use the question section where you can write down your question and we will read it out and provide an answer. Note that you are on mute at the moment and as said, we will unmute you if you raise your hand. For that, it's very important if you're using a phone rather than your computer for your audio connection that you have entered your audio pin without which we won't be able to unmute you. A final point of housekeeping is that you are being recorded, this webinar is being recorded. And with that, housekeeping done, and I will turn over to Eric and then Dennis to present the webinar to you. We hope you enjoy this, thank you. Thanks very much, Corinne, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, thanks. Um, we had a very good uh, first webinar uh, yesterday on this subject, and uh, very good, uh, particularly lots of discussion or questions at the end and looking forward to your questions uh, today as well. Um, I, if I can go to the next slide, um, and what we see um, in a moment is an overview of the um, stages of progress in this initiative. Um, and just to, to start by restating principle one, and we're gonna get to the principles a little bit later, but principle one states positive impact finance is that which serves to finance positive impact business. It is that which serves to deliver a positive contribution to one or more of the three pillars of sustainable development once any potential negative impacts to any of the pillars have been duly identified and mitigated. This is kind of the chapeau, the overall framing essentially of the initiative of, of uh, what positive impact finance is aiming to do. In terms of the, the genesis, um, this started with a group of banks, including uh, Denis and a number of others, um, Denis at, at Sokjen uh, and a number of others, later was joined by um, a number of investors who together started to think about the notion of how do we get into the difficult space of financing sustainable development? So essentially attacking the question of how to finance what today seems beyond the reach of the, the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. We've definitely seen a lot of progress um, broadly on sustainable finance um, since 2015, particularly um, uh, lots on disclosure and climate disclosure with the, the TCFD with its recommendations. Um, so lots of, um, I would say, positive steps going forward, but there's also a general realization that you know, prudent, prudent risk management on its own is not enough to get capital to all the places it needs to go. So this group um, initially uh, prepared a manifesto, which essentially is the vision for the initiative, which addresses the challenge that if the SDGs are to be met, they're going to need to attract uh, upwards of trillions of dollars of mainstream finance. So in short, the unmet needs must become the source of a profitable market or markets. So the expectation is that by seeking a holistic, a more holistic understanding of the environmental, social, and economic needs around us, we can develop new business models that can deliver the impact sought by the SDGs. So we need to understand impacts better. Um, we need to start with existing business models to get from a, net a negative economy to at least net neutral or somewhat positive. And then we can also start to work on new business models that can deliver on the unmet needs of the SDGs, which current business models just can't address. So the next step uh, was to develop the set of principles, which were launched in January 2017 in Paris. 
And these principles are a framework to drive holistic impact management to help financial institutions understand and manage the impact of their clients or investee companies and, and to institutionalize this understanding across organizations. So over time, uh, we see these principles as helping create clarity to the market with their holistic approach and their requirement for transparency. Now, as um, uh, many of the bankers on the phone uh, will, will know well, we are in the process of developing principles of responsible banking. And one of the, the novel aspects of these principles as compared to the PRI or the PSI, which have been in, 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 in place for quite some time for investment insurance, is that these banking principles um, as, as first principle have that of alignment with society's needs and as second principle have um, that of the holistic managing of impacts. And I think this is what really truly sets them apart, makes them timely for the post 2015 um, sustainable finance um, uh, world. Um, and that essentially provides a very strong linking with the principles for positive impact. And so, whereas the banking principles are more high level ambition setting, the, the positive impact principles are a tool for implementing this high level ambition. So it's actually how do we deliver um, on understanding and essentially financing um, impact uh, in, in, in its various forms. Um, the final of the four steps of development has been, I think, the most important is on tools and guidance. So a set of tools are under development, including an impact radar, which is a tool for impact identification, and also guidance on uh, frameworks for different asset classes and product types. So we have um, uh, on corporate debt, on real estate investment, and there'll be a number of other areas where these um, uh, guidance notes will be um, uh, will be published. Um, this guidance is going to um, help financial institutions qualify their products and services as being principles compliant and for auditors and analysts to start to provide verification and, and second opinion. Next slide, please. So this position paper, which um, this webinar is, is meant to uh, present, is very important. This essentially is the, the framing um, for the overall initiative. And uh, it's meant to explain the concept of impact-based business models and finance. Um, and you know, the, as we know, there's a lot of talk around impacts today uh, on measurement, on attribution, on additionality, profitability. But I think the wider question to start with is, you know, where does impact-based finance come in? What exactly are we talking about? What does it mean? So this paper is seeking to unpack this concept at the core of which is the proposition that the concept of impact can be taken further than what we do today, and that it's a strategic opportunity for financiers to drive their understanding of impacts and make it an integral part of your business development and, and uh, R&D strategy. So it's been prepared by the founders of the initiative and the current drivers. It's based on exchanges with multiple stakeholders going back uh, since the initiative was launched. And today is an, an opportunity to understand the conceptual basis of this work um, on the SDG financing gap. And I, I, so we're going to have um, Denise Child is going to uh, present to get into the details of the paper and essentially what the positive impact notion is. Uh, and then afterwards, we're going to have good time for uh, feedback and, and questions. And uh, Kareen. Uh, told you uh, the options for doing that, and we'll remind you about that after uh, oh, Denis' presentation. Thank you. So if, that, um, if I can hand it over to you, Denis. Thank you. Uh, maybe next Please slide. So the, the starting point is that what we wanted to address is not to qualify the existing business that were heading to SDGs, but what we wanted to address is uh, what is not achieved, which is the financing gap. And it's quite surprising, but there's not much literature about this gap. Uh, the, the, there's an understanding that the global financing gap is around $2.5 trillion, which is to be compared to the five to seven that are to be invested on a yearly basis. So basically it's huge gap. But 
we get we got in the details of these gaps uh, to uh, to see how much of the gap was addressed uh, within a series of countries. And what you see is that uh, probably uh, one uh, of the major regions where you have a huge gap is Africa. What you see also is that uh, probably in Africa, that's where the gap is less addressed compared to uh, other regions. So in some way, the gap is quite correctly addressed in uh, advanced country and mainly by the private sector. So the financing gap in advanced country is achievable. Uh, it needs some efforts, but it's achievable. If you look to emerging markets and developing countries, we are just in the middle of what is the situation in Africa and the situation in advanced country, because in, in some countries such as China, for instance, uh, you have a lot of efforts that are made to, to meet with the SDGs. What you see, uh, so the, 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 what we have also uh, been doing is find out what kind of investment were to be performed. And there, uh, what we found, obviously, was globally what was needed is investment in infrastructure. But one of the difficulties we met was that, in fact, the SDGs are not sectors of activity. The SDGs are uh, <coughs> results to, 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 to get to. So, in fact, impact should be the right concept to capture the achievement or not of the SDGs. And would it be the public accounting or the uh, uh, private accounting? Uh, these accountings do not capture impacts. Where uh, we, that's the reason why we had so much difficulties to have a uh, more detailed uh, uh, information of what should be uh, should be achieved in terms of uh, SDGs. So the conclusion is that uh, if you look to the gaps, if you look to the gaps in developed countries, probably it can be achieved with more effort. Would it be from the private sector? or from the public sector. But if you look to Africa, it is the, 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 the gap is so huge that it cannot be achieved only through financial means. It means that there's another option which is interesting, which is to uh, see whether uh, the ratio between investment and impacts could be brought down, hence reducing the financial need for SDGs on the one side, but also gaining in profitability, would it be for the private or the public sector? I mean, to have efficiency in the investment that are performed. Uh, <clears throat> of course, there's still some progress to be made on the current business models. But here you have an idea of what is the share of, of the different specific efforts that are made either by the public sector or by the, by the, by, by the private sector. You see, for instance, that the share of remittances in emerging country is huge compared to uh, the efforts of the addition of MDBs, DFIs, and ODAs, uh, which are the ones that are usually uh, named as uh, the main contributor uh, to, uh, let's say, uh, social, uh, environmental, and development 
issues in uh, emerging countries. Also, if you look, we took the global private equity and probably uh, whole of private equity is not, uh, uh, is not uh, uh, getting to, uh, uh, to meet the SDGs. You look to the crowdfunding, which is very small. The share of foundation is also very small. Uh, the share of institutional investor is still uh, small as well. So when you look to the individual uh, uh, figures of, of these different uh, sources of finance, it seems to be huge. But when you compare to the five to seven trillion a year, it's complicated. Also, we had difficulties in setting the figures here because most of the institutions of the sectors of activity are communicating of, on their outstanding or their stocks uh, of uh, finance and not on the annual flows. So we, 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 we restored the annual flows, but we, we don't have the, uh, the, the direct information on, on this, nor we have sufficient information of what is directly linked to SDGs. But globally speaking, uh, it means that despite we should, uh, let's say, uh, enhance the current cooperation between the private sector and the, the public sector to, uh, to be more efficient, uh, it means that if, let's say, there's not a solution to bring down the cost to impacts, it will be very difficult to achieve the SDGs. So in some way, uh, uh, to, to address new business models is a key issue uh, to solve the SDGs. OK, next slide. So now, <clears throat> The, the economy is moving uh, to the fourth industrial revolution. But what does that mean? That means one, clients are seen differently. I mean, in the current economy, either you have you're, you're, you're producing products or services, you need to have an iteration with your clients to adapt your products to the clients. And most of the companies are assessed on uh, their uh, production of cash flow. Now, the fourth industrial revolution, which is integrating more and more uh, digitalization in uh, the services or products, creates a situation where the client is not only the one that uh, buys products or services, but is uh, at the center of uh, the profitability in the sense that when you're getting data on a client, you would be able to provide very different services. It means today, for instance, is there still a car industry or is it a battery? Are they public, public utilities? So the borders between the different sectors are moving. And the situation is that probably since you will sell more than uh, one uh, service, specific service to your client, you would broaden the scope of your business uh, through the collection of data with the client. You could create a combination of free services and uh, for profit services, free services could be a way to uh, stabilize your clients and keep your clients. If you go to Google, you don't pay, but they are paid through ads uh, and uh, you have a free service. And in fact, the, the payment is, is coming from, from elsewhere. So this situation uh, of Google uh, or, or Facebook or other uh, GAFA are quite unique now, but they are spreading to the whole, to the whole uh, industry. Now, the, 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 this means that 
uh, client is the end user. So it means uh, clients, they want a result. And what we were just saying is that SDGs uh, are impacts. So SDGs are also results. So the whole idea is to say, uh, are the impacts uh, a way uh, to, uh, to, to, to make directly money? Today, uh, it, it, uh, impacts or SDGs are looked as externalities and they are not looked as creating direct value they are, uh, they, 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 or they are creating global value, but they are not creating a value to uh, a specific product and services. So that's what's new. What's new is clients are providing our value generators that the needs that are the SDG needs uh, uh, are a big market that could be addressed uh, because uh, 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 we've seen examples that uh, this new economy will bring down the cost of impacts. Next slide. So one example, which basically is quite important, is the lamppost. Uh, Lamppost, uh, the, the, the current uh, willingness of the different uh, municipalities around the world is to go for lead rather from, than from bulbs, given uh, they want to uh, go for energy saving and cost saving on the long term. But the investment is huge and the return on investment is very long just like 25 years or, or, or so. But then some uh, corporates did start to sell different type of lampposts, uh, saying that the, 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 we, we, we met uh, some uh, corporates that we are proposing over 14 uh, different functionalities of a lamppost. And we mentioned some of them here, uh, uh, security, uh, mobility, uh, communication, Wi-Fi, energy providers to charge device or to contribute to mobility, uh, uh, culture, uh, advertisement. Uh, uh, also, uh, it could be used for intel intelligent uh, uh, buses, uh, so and other uh, other uh, type of functionalities. So these functionalities uh, could be a, a source of revenues. So today, most of the companies that are proposing this type of long posts. They go to, to the municipalities, they say, okay, uh, a lamppost uh, without functionalities, but the lead, the cost is 100. But if you want functionalities, then it goes to 150 or so. So they're still selling the lamppost and uh, the burden uh, of either the finance, repaying the finance or to directly pay uh, the goods are on the municipalities. Hence, you have a situation whereby, for instance, in Europe, uh, it has been estimated that uh, the, the current program are only half of the needs. So, of course, this is uh, worse in other regions of, of, of the world, because basically, municipalities, and that's normal, are adapting their programs to their financing capabilities, so which means that the richer municipalities, they can afford it, and the poorer municipalities, they cannot, they, cannot, they cannot afford, or the poorest countries, they cannot afford. Then, uh, 
the business model, even though the technology has changed, so far the business model has not changed. So today you don't have a company that comes to a municipality and says, uh, I give you the lamppost for free if you give me the administration of the different functionalities. So today they are still either selling a sophisticated lamppost or a less sophisticated lamppost. So the risk for this company is still on the municipality and the finance risk is still on the municipality. If a company is coming to a municipality and says, I want uh, to uh, the revenues of the functionality, uh, the different functionalities, the risk won't be longer on the municipality or would be reduced on the municipality by the discounting of the value of the contracts. The contracts could be contracts with private entity. Uh, you could have uh, Wi-Fi uh, bid uh, to, uh, to uh, telephone companies. You could have uh, uh, you could have uh, security. Uh, I mean, for mobility, sold to uh, uh, to uh, connected cars, uh, to uh, uh, to intelligent buses, and so on. So it means that uh, also it means that. Uh, uh, since you're uh, selling, you could even imagine you could add revenues. I mean, the, the, the cost of a lamppost for a municipality could be negative. Then there's also a, 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 a situation where uh, either uh, the, 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 the lamppost provider is bearing the the financing cost, so you have no municipality risk anymore at all, because you have a risk on uh, the, the service provider, uh, the, the lamppost provider, and uh, with a guarantee on the services that are uh, that, that, that are going together with the lamppost. So that's very important because on the one side you have the technology that changes, but the business models are not changing yet. Next slide. So next slide is another example. The previous examples was to say that if, let's say, with an investment, you could find ways uh, to add services, uh, given uh, you, 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 you could uh, reduce the cost to impacts, and also, you could move the risk from one public entity to uh, private entities. Here, it's the, the situation is energy efficiency, and take exam and I will take the example of uh, retrofit of uh, private housing. So today, you don't have a company that integrates all the the the. the the subjects that leads to energy efficiency. Okay, you have passive energy efficiency, energy efficiency, but here you have uh, the guys that are dealing with the roofs, isolation. You get you have different guys looking to the windows, different guys looking to the boilers. You're the one. You have the one that are constructing the goods, producing the goods. You're, you're the one that are, are installing the goods. And you have the ESCO that are making computer, computation to see whether it makes sense or not uh, to process with one type of investment. Of course, you also have active energy efficiency, uh, which is, uh, let's say, connected objects. Uh, for instance, you you have your washing machine, your 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 uh, your fridge, and everything's connected. And uh, also, you have uh, smart meters. You have information. You have uh, when uh, systems whereby when you open your windows, it closes your heating. So you 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 have uh, uh, you have different uh, service providers for that. 
Then you have the public utility that are providing the energy, which at the end of the day uh, are the one that uh, 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 have information on the client, on the way they're consuming, and some of them are already providing benchmarks to, uh, to their clients to say whether they over uh, consume energy or not. Then you have, uh, you have, uh, you have uh, bills and uh, boxes, or it means that you have data collection through telecom company, and in some countries, uh, the payment of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the, the, the bills are coming through uh, telecom companies, through cell phone uh, payment. Of course, uh, this, is all, this is either through telecom company or through internet company. So the whole story is that when uh, Mr. and Mrs. Do want to go for energy efficiency, uh, they have to combine all that together. At least they have to combine passive energy and active energy efficiency. They would need to have access to data on their own consumption compared to, uh, to, uh, to their peers. They would need that. They, need, they would need to be experts in energy efficiency. And of course, they are not. And then Mr. and Mrs. Do, they have little uh, uh, bargaining powers. Uh, you know, uh, I did, I did uh, bargain for my own home energy efficiency. I could divide by two one of the one of the bill, uh, which means there's room for negotiation. But I, I was just uh, negotiating on one uh, my own home, <laughs> not to look to uh, a whole. Uh, quarter or uh, to, 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 to a wider range. So my power of negotiation was still small. So one, if you integrate all the services, you will, take, you will make the right choices. You will have bargaining power. And instead of having each of, of the uh, service or product providers trying to maximize the cost, the, the, the price, of their, uh, uh, of their product, you could have a company which target would be to scale down the energy bill and to be repaid directly on the savings. So this is not the case either. So today you don't have this integration. You have all, from a technical point of view, again, you have all the solutions. But the solutions are not integrated by a single company, which target would be to uh, optimize the solution, because when optimizing the solution, they would minimize the delivery of energy, hence they would make more money. So we, we are today in a very uh, vicious circle, and we should turn it into a, 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 a positive circle. And this would lead also to reduce cost to impact ratio. So, so on the one side, multi uh, uh, type of services that could be brought by uh, a, a single uh, investment, uh, access to data to clients, which in, 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 as such is a value, and uh, the integration of impact value chain. Uh, Energy efficiency is an impact. Energy efficiency is not a sector of activity yet. So in, we, we need to turn it into sector activity through impact, uh, through impact-based uh, economy. Next slide. So I think this slide is very important because it means that uh, to get there, it's a journey. But I think the market and the finance sector made a lot of progress. Some years ago, there was no consideration at all of impacts. 
then uh, let's say uh, would it be uh, asset managers or banks they started to look to uh, exclusions to monitor the negative impacts uh, and then they started to think uh, about the positive impacts uh, and uh, putting forward uh, the positive action they entered into so probably uh, we, we are we are there uh, also, I think what SDGs are bringing quite clearly, but is not yet completely on the market, is the holistic necessary, holistic consideration of impacts. I mean, today, and for good reasons, uh, the market has been focusing on, uh, on climate issues, which is a key world issues, and it's a is not yet addressed completely at all. So we need to continue our efforts on climate. But three pillars mean development, which is one we don't hear of very often, social basic needs of the population, which we start to hear of, but not enough. And when we look to environment, of course, there's lots of issues which are the water issues which are very key and uh, are harming uh, a lot of, uh, of, of populations which are the air pollution which is also uh, the soil preservations and biodiversity so we, we need to be more holistic in the way we are uh, looking uh, to uh, the issues and I think SDGs is bringing a lot to that. But when uh, we want to address all that, what we just said is that we need to enter new, new business models. And these new business models do not lie with the finance industry. They lie uh, with the private sector, but also they lie with the, the, the public sector asking the right questions. They, the private sector, let's say, is quite advanced on a technical point of view, but is not integrated yet. And the public sector is still thinking on investments rather than impacts. And in fact, the, 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 the public sector, and namely the, the political parties, they, they, they should aim on results. And results are impacts. So why not they ask for better education rather than for schools, better healthcare rather than hospitals, uh, or uh, mobility rather than public transports. If they would express them in this way, then it, will, it would force the private sector to organize them in, uh, in achieving the impacts, rather than uh, uh, getting uh, uh, providing uh, the, uh, the investment uh, that are asked by the, uh, uh, the, the, the public sector. Uh, so what we showed there is it's, it won't happen easily. So, but everything that was a progress on the current business is very important because gradually it brings the impacts forward. So in, the, in our existing business, it's very important, as Eric said in the beginning, that we work on the frameworks to see how much we can prove the impacts and how we measure these impacts. What are the systems to measure the impacts ex ante? Because at the time of investment, uh, it's the time of the decision. And how we can control these are achieved ex post. So it's very important that, let's say, to have uh, 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 this concept of positive, uh, of positive impact on the current business. Then it prepares, it paves the way for the, uh, the impact-based business. And uh, I'm quite confident that all the efforts that we are making to clarify this debate on impacts will help 
a lot uh, to grow the impact-based business. Next slide. So I, Eric said, uh, uh, in, uh, gave the definition. Uh, so we, we should st stick to this definition, which is positive impact finance is what serves to finance positive impact business. Uh, serves to, uh, to deliver a positive contribution to one or more of the three pillars of sustainable development once any potential negative impact to any pillars have been duly identified and mitigated. So I think this definition is very important and it also explains what is the role of the positive impact initiative compared to any other initiatives. This initiative is holistic. It doesn't mean that, for instance, if one initiative is uh, uh, focusing on uh, sea, the sea preservation, for instance, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's not a good initiative. It's a, it's a very good initiative. But it means that uh, uh, positive impact means that we, 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 we should we, we, we have a broad scope. To have the scope of the three pillars is important. When, when, as I said before, some of the impacts are more neglected than, than others. So we need to, uh, to pursue the global, the global scope. So this global scope it, it, it integrates all the, the, the different specific initiatives that are being uh, uh, put in place. Also, it's important to accept negative impacts. I mean, negative impacts, on the one side, we should accept it. On the other side, we should look to minimize, to avoid, or to compensate. But human activity has always negative impacts. So if we would not accept negative impacts, then uh, uh, it reduces the scope and we never achieve the SDGs. I give you one example, for instance, if you want to, 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 uh, uh, to meet targets on climate change, it's important to integrate large dams our electricity providers. In terms of CO2 emission, it's excellent. On the other hand, large dams are creating harm to generally population because population needs to be displaced and uh, as consequences on the local biodiversity or on the local climate. So it means these are to be addressed. So what are the measures that are put in place to compensate or to save some species that are endangered by, uh, by uh, the large dams. So the fact, and if, let's say, the finance industry would concentrate on sectors where they feel there's no uh, negative impacts, they would reduce the scope uh, a lot. And uh, this is also important to, uh, to address the gap in the, those of emerging countries where, let's say, the regulation is not strong enough to ensure the negative impacts are correctly addressed. Because one could pretend that in developed countries, uh, the regulation is strong enough to protect for the negative impacts. Uh, but uh, this is not the case uh, in, uh, in many countries. So uh, it's important that there's a conscience that these negative impacts is something we have to address to broaden the scope of, an, uh, of our intervention and be able to achieve the SDGs. Uh, as I said, uh, the, the transition to uh, a positive impact economy won't be simple because on the one side the public sector uh, is uh, uh, is difficult to move uh, 
from the, the, the usual way they act. And on the other side, probably on the long run, the private sector will invest in uh, the uh, force in the, uh, the, for the technical uh, changes will move the business models. But in, uh, it, it, uh, it will take some time because on the current business model, they are still making a lot of money. Uh, and uh, if, let's say, on the part of the SDGs that are being achieved, uh, they, are, they are getting paid. So the whole issue is to say whether the private sector will consider the untapped SDG market as a market, but this needs changing the business models. And big companies have difficulties to change their business models. And small companies, they don't have the strengths, the reach to a, world, a worldwide issue. So what we thought is that, as I said, when we want on the current business to bring clarification. And since as finance institutions, we are in most of the case, not in the driving seat of the ones that are actually performing the investments, we are dependent upon the information uh, that are provided by private sector or public sector. So that's why uh, the frameworks will take, on, uh, will take into consideration the different situation the financial institutions are in and uh, will build on the information that is currently provided. Information on impacts. So that's why we need to have a clarification on impact. And as Eric said, we started with the radar, which is to say which are the main impacts we are looking for, either negative or positive. And uh, what is the definition? Because there's not, uh, you could find many definitions of the same, uh, of the same impacts. Then we will continue with what kind of measure, ex post, ex ante, what we can deduct from, uh, uh, from uh, sectors definition and so on. So we, we, we need to progress on that to bring clarification so that uh, the investors, they know what they are investing in and the banks that are uh, uh, financing, uh, they uh, also uh, can uh, get the, the better uh, uh, information they can on, on impacts. So I think the, this first move that we entered in is very important for the future. Then, uh, on the new business models, one uh, of our idea uh, was uh, to stimulate the demand uh, and to create new types of public-private partnerships, uh, whereby before, uh, let's say, launching tenders for investment, there would be uh, some common uh, action on what is the solution? Start with the impacts rather than start with the investment. Of course, if you're investing in schools, it will enhance education. But maybe you, if you have schools without uh, professors, it doesn't work. If you have hospitals without, uh, uh, without medicine, it doesn't work either. So you, you, you need to, to, to think more globally and maybe a digitalized solution could be a lot less costly. Uh, so the, 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 the second uh, idea we have is to see how we can stimulate the demand through uh, the, uh, the public sector and on the other side uh, to uh, discuss with corporates how much, since they already made the move on the technical side, 
they, they would move their, their business models to impact-based uh, business models. Okay, great. Uh, uh, thanks very much, Denis. Um, uh, we're going to go into a question period now, and thanks, Denis. It's quite a, a lot of material in terms of the overview um, you've just gone through. Um, what, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to ask uh, Corrine to come on to just give a reminder about how questions can be submitted. And then, Denis, I'm going to come back to you with a couple that we have and also have some that I think Corrine can take from the, the Secretariat angle. But Corrine, do you want, can you just give a quick reminder? Sure, so two ways to, uh, to ask your questions, um, as you're starting to do now, actually. Use the questions section on your little dashboard um, to just write and type your, your question in. We'll read it out and give answers. Alternatively, use the little hand icon to raise your hand and we can unmute you. Um, but we do have a first question here. So, Ginny, um, if I can talk to you, this is actually kind of a broad one. Um, Sokjen, uh, you're one of the initiators, and, and you, as an institution, well, first, you're a very large organization, but you're also quite advanced, I think, with the notion broadly on um, positive impact. So the question is um, a broad one. What does it take to drive adoption of an impact-driven approach in practice <clears throat> across your organization? What, what's been your experience uh, uh, within SOCGEN? How, how has this, how have you taken an idea and really institutionalized it? Okay, uh, in fact, we, we, we started with uh, the negative impacts on project finance um, uh, 10 years ago. And along with uh, Equator Principal uh, Association. Uh, so we looked to, to these negative impacts, and project finance is one of the sectors where you can handle uh, quite well uh, the monitoring of the impacts. Then we, we said, what about we are looking to the negative, but we don't look, look to the positive. So we started to look to the positive, so we needed to, to but there was no frameworks existing, there was no association, so we did it on our own and we provided all this information to the positive impact group so that uh, uh, so that uh, everybody could say, uh, give their views. So we had a kind of, the, of a radar different to, to the one that is the result of the discussion between the members, but let's say we had a kind of a radar to identify the negative and positive impacts on project finance. Then uh, we moved, we made two moves. One move was to say <clears throat> what we do on the client side, and we want to do the same on the client side. So this was more difficult because here you don't have you didn't have standards to uh, look to uh, clients. Of course, and that's where we were closer to uh, asset managers, because asset managers also have to assess clients, and you have also firms that existed that were serving uh, uh, asset managers, such as Sustelletics, Vigeo, and, and others. Uh, and we started to work with these guys as well, and we started to, to look to a more complex issue, which is how we assess, we assess the client. In the same time, we thought that what we proved as impacts, we, we should turn into products. And it was at the time uh, green bonds were launched. So we, we thought that we should have a broader view just like green bonds. So we started to use the production of what we labeled uh, initially positive impact within the bank. To, uh, pro to move the positive impact concept to the market. It was appreciated as a good uh, green bond because we focused on uh, renewable energy and uh, climate change. At that time, we worked a lot on the KPIs, I mean, to prove the impacts. And it, we, we had a problem because some of our clients, they provided figures on the CO2 avoided, some did not and some refused to, to do so. But globally, it was not coherent because the methodology were different. So we decided on a whole portfolio 
to use one uh, method, which is the EIB method, to calculate the CO2 avoided, to have something that is readable to, for the clients. The next subject that was raised by asset managers was, yeah, it's good you gave the information on global projects, but about what about our share into the bonds that come to finance this, 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 uh, this. And there we proposed a methodology to use the EIA methodology that brings the correspondence between dollar and technology uh, used to produce energy. So in fact, we faced first an issue which was uh, to analyze where were the impacts. And then we came, when we came to products for investors out of what we are producing, we went through the issue of uh, uh, evaluating the impacts both globally on projects and to, to give the share of the investors in terms of impacts. So that's the, uh, and in, in, in the meantime, we are progressing on a global client uh, uh, issue. On the client as well, we wanted to look to the negative side, how they were addressing their main uh, uh, environmental and social issues but also uh, what, where they are trying. And here, there's a new market that is progressing mainly in Europe, which is impact loans. And impact loans, most of the time, are linked to, uh, let's say, data provided by extra financial agencies and uh, to commit to SDGs, which is good. But we thought that we could pro push forward a bit more the impact issue in uh, uh, asking the clients what target they had in terms of progression of, uh, of their impacts. And we started to have some success that uh, companies were committing to, uh, to achieve some goals. And the next and last, because I'm quite long, is that we set up uh, an impact-based uh, team uh, to finance these new business models, which means that currently we are, the first step is to push this idea to uh, uh, public sector or private sector, and uh, we were close to achieve some deals, but unfortunately we have, not, we have not closed one yet, but it's still rather on a research and development role. And the four teams are bringing value to one to, one to the other. So that's, uh, that's uh, our experience. Also, the experience is that uh, uh, it grad we, we were, uh, let's say, uh, three people uh, uh, six years ago. Now we are 26. And uh, it's also spread within the bank. So it means that today the bank is evaluating what kind of their business is what we call sustainable and positive impact. We still call it sustainable when we don't have the frameworks. And uh, and that's why we're working on frameworks because we want to have something clear and that can be audited. And if you don't have frameworks, you cannot be audited, it's just communication. So we, do, we of course, we like to communicate a lot, but we like that what we uh, do, we can prove and can be criticized. So we are working on, uh, on extending the scope of what is positive impact within the bank. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, so Thanks very much, Denis. Sorry, have, have you? Okay, I think you're 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 finished. Um, it's a, a very nice overview. And let, let's move to a next. Um, there's been a couple of questions around um, the question or the notion of, and I'll read a question. Do you think new business models will address risks when it comes to investing in emerging markets? And we have a, um, a related longer question a little bit from Assad Kazi from Islamic Development Bank around asking that question, risk mitigation, and um, sort of what's the role for development banking in terms of, of helping mitigate those risks. Um, Denis, can you speak to that from a SOCJED perspective? What role for the development banks in this, in this arena, particularly on risk mitigation? So, uh 
Uh, today, what is right is that in emerging markets, most of the finance, uh, public finance, uh, of the public sector, of the, of the, sorry, the private sector in convention needs to be backed for risk issues by uh, multilaterals, uh, DFIs, or export credit agencies. That, so, so that's true. So here, what we can do is, uh, on the first uh, move, is to better, better blend uh, public and private finance in order, uh, in, in order to, to increase uh, the volume of finance provided. But this is necessary, but that won't meet, uh, uh, that won't uh, close the financial gap. So uh, impact-based finance, what we look at is uh, to have, uh, to capture, in fact, revenues from, uh, that are resulting from investment that can be, uh, that can be used as uh, the source for reimbursement of loan, hence avoiding to have uh, the uh, the public the public risk. So this is possible in some occasion. Maybe if it's possible 100%, you would have 100% impact based. But if let's say it's possible, say 20%, then uh, you you reduce the former approach from 100 to 90. So it means that you have a better, uh, 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 you have widened uh, the, the volume of finance that is provided. So I think that we are currently actually working on uh, emerging countries uh, on, on, this, uh, on these solutions. Uh, so they are achievable. And uh, also uh, what is achievable is uh, to to look to uh, uh, either uh, flows. Uh, I mean, one is to increase local currency finance on the one side, and on foreign currency finance probably to to look to fl f outcoming flows that are avoided, and I mean outcoming flows of finance that are can be uh, avoided uh, by the investments. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and incoming flows uh, that can be used uh, as a security. So I think that we could progress a lot, a lot on, emerging, uh, on emerging countries. Thanks, thanks, Denis. Um, Assad, in his question, he, he made specific reference to the uh, lamppost initiative, the example that, Denis, you, you had given in the presentation. We actually have uh, Graham Kultklo on the line, who is the initiator of the Humble Lamppost Initiative. So, uh, Graham, I think we've we've unmuted you. Um, you want to give us a, a one or two minutes from your perspective, particularly but not only around the notion of risk mitigation, um, what role of uh, the development community, development finance, but also more broadly, I think the relationship between public and private in, in trying to realize these types of investments. Sure, Eric, thank you, and Denise, thank you. Um, we're tackling an enormous um, topic. So, so first, really, a statement of support, and second, a question. Um, yes, indeed, there's, there's, I am uh, obligated, whether I like it or not, to support this, and I fully do support it. So as the lead for um, a, a new scale initiative in Europe around the humble land post, which is trying to connect five city clusters and get triple-digit million investments, um, there are undoubtedly opportunities to both deliver, particularly for that initiative, something which is a tangible and real financial benefit, um, which in effect of, gives uh, de-risks and gives the opportunity for all to have some flexibility in terms of all the other things you can do, because the, the security of the return on energy savings um, overcompensates for the very modest amount of money that needs to be spent on some of the additional features that deliver environmental and social benefits. So it's probably the example um, whereby we can show a way of, of moving forward. When you take buildings, when you take more complex things, it's harder. Um, the second thing that I'm involved in is, is uh, there are 12 programs across Europe 
an investment of half a billion um, from the European Commission, and I lead the, the business models and financing group of that. And so because of those two things, one, one very practical and one more systemic, I am obliged and delighted to do what I can to help in this because I think it's very important. The one observation I'd make and question I have is around the complexity of modeling the benefits. Um, because you're dealing with uh, social, environmental and economic developments that come through at different times with different risks, that method and monitoring, which Denis, you mentioned, becomes utterly critical. And my, my worry is that the different perspectives of the private sector, the investment community and the public sector in terms of how they view value and how they consider time um, it needs to be rationalized and i have not as yet seen trusted methods to do that and i think for me the critical pinch point of this sort of thinking is to pr produce some 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 methods that work that people can trust and that we can prove on a few simple things i'd love to get your views on that denise Okay, uh, I think uh, uh, I, I think on the one side uh, uh, I didn't see uh, any research on uh, the value of the different values that could be created by the numbers. Yesterday I was discussing with uh, guys on uh, healthcare. Uh, they see uh, they see also an application that could be useful for healthcare uh, using uh, using lamppost. So I think one, uh, uh, what is necessary is to uh, define what kind of services that could be provided through the lamppost. Then make the difference between the one that have a global uh, economic value, but where we cannot uh, I mean, uh, I saw burn nest. I don't see how to make money out of the burn nest, but I am not. Uh, I'm, uh, I think uh, still we, we should use the post for burn nest, but uh, to, 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 to see which are the ones that can be monetized or not. And this is a question which is not a question for the finance industry. This is a question for. Uh, the, 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 the guys that are producing lamppost. Because today they are still selling a lamppost. Tomorrow they should, and then it should be their measurement, their analysis uh, to, uh, to see what kind of money they can make in, uh, in selling the services that are attached to the lamppost. So that's different to have a research. That's different to have a methodology. It's like, you know, uh, there are some initiatives of, of uh, EU or that is, uh, or EIB, I don't remember, which is pushing, uh, let's say, to have a single methodology for energy efficiency. But at the end of the day, the impact-based uh, approach is to say, okay, that's good to have a methodology and a computation, uh, for the pro pro public sector to, to know what would be the benefit or the investor to know what be the benefit. But the issue today is not on the investor side. The issue is that the service provider should make money out of it. Then it is methodology that is important. If he thinks he can make money out of it, if he thinks he cannot make money out of it, that the services they cannot be uh, turned into actual contracts, uh, then uh, there's no impact-based economy. So that's not my view. My view is that all the functionalities or many functionalities of the, 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 the lamppost can be uh, monetized, but it will be different from one country to another. It will be different uh, depending on what is uh, uh, and the role of the, uh, the private, I mean, Either you, you ask the private sector to monetize all and it's its property, or uh, it's a public sector that is monetizing the functionalities, and then it comes as reducing the risk on the municipalities. But I think it's a matter of, let's say, uh, case by case, and it's not a matter of methodology. The methodology be necessary research be interesting to prove it, it would work, 
But then when you like it to work, I mean, the guys that are taking the risk, they should make the computation. Just like in project finance, uh, is, uh, probably you have methodologies for uh, project finance, but the one that is investing is making the computation and is taking the risk. So, so that's, that, that's where we should come to uh, for impact-based finance. Okay, thanks, Denis. Uh, unfortunately, we, we don't have enough time. We have quite a number of questions. I'm, I'm just going to address one more and then pass it over to Kareen um, just to talk about next steps. Uh, we have a question from Nikki Kemp from Ambler's Son uh, that relates to the principles of responsible banking. And she says, well, it, the, the, those principles um, recommend making impact assessment as part of every lending decision. Um, I guess it's a question. Uh, do the principles of responsible banking recommend making impact assessment a part of every lending decision? Um, and um, so that um, the positive and negative impacts can be fully assessed and priced across the bank's lending book. Um, just uh, I'll respond to that. Um, the, the principles of responsible banking as one of the, the important elements are that um, signatories will need to assess which parts of their lending book has or of their overall activities has a, um, a significant impact on aspects of environmental and social issues and then to focus on them um, which means it doesn't necessarily say that they're going to measure impact for every transaction but that they will put in place frameworks for measuring impact overall in the areas where they have the greatest um, impact and negatively or, or positively. Um, however, as I mentioned earlier, those principles are not a tool for doing that. They are a broad ambition setting framework. So what we're talking about here more is at the transaction level, exactly how do you do that? How do you do that measurement? Um, what sort of um, of uh, information transparency needs to be provided on a deal by deal basis. I think that's how the two pieces fit together and I hope that that um, addresses Nikki your, your question. Uh, we do have several others. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have time today. Um, we would ask um, any, any participants to get in touch with the Secretariat if they have further feedback or questions and we will be trying to address um, the, uh, all the issues that get raised um, over time, um, both through additional webinars and the next one will be planned uh, later in October on implementation um, and also through our other information um, activities. But with that, if I could um, pass it back to Kareen to talk about um, just to closing out uh, what are the next steps. Kareen? Yes, so we've already mentioned um, that we'll have a, another webinar towards the, uh, the second half of next month where uh, we complement this one, which has really been about explaining the concept of impact-based business and finance and taking impact further than we currently understand it to look specifically at implementation and what holistic impact management looks like and how you indeed set yourselves up to progressively um, be able to, to be supporting effectively um, that disruptive new business model space. Uh, the position paper itself, um, as well as a number of the, uh, the guidance and the tools for the implementation of the positive impact principles, will be released at Unified Global Roundtable on 26 to 28 November um, in Paris, as some of you may already know. Um, and uh, you, in the meantime, can sign up for updates, basically, on, on the, uh, how we progress with this. Uh, online. Uh, we have a distribution list where you can receive updates. In the meantime, we would appreciate um, as much feedback as we can get. So thank you already for the feedback and the questions we've had online and we'll get back to you one-on-one um, -on -one for those who've not managed to answer online. Um, but please do feel free to, uh, you know, to continue to send feedback. There's also a dedicated feedback form available online if you haven't seen that and feel free to spread it uh, in the, uh, the the position paper around you. Um, the paper's available for download online, um, but you can also share the information through our hashtag and on LinkedIn if that's more convenient for you. Um, and effectively, we're very much looking forward to continuing this conversation with, with all of you. And just the last slide to, to thank you again and to give you a number of uh, email addresses that you can use to be in contact with us directly as well. Thank you very much to all of you and thank you Dennis and Eric um, for presenting the Positive Impact Initiative and the concept paper, Rethinking Impact to Finance the SDGs.
Super. Thanks very much, Corinne. Thanks very much, uh, Denis. And uh, thanks, everyone, for, uh, for taking part, for your questions. And we look forward to uh, working with you, you as this continues to move forward.